Hey, this is Dino, and today I want to talk to you about logging from Avogee into the GCP Operation Suite logging system that's formerly known as Stackdriver using service account credentials. Uh, so, this web page shows you kind of the introduction of Google Cloud's Operation Suite, including the log system. Uh, what I want to show you is um, logging from Apigee into this. And there's a particular uh, requirement for credentials for doing that. This sequence diagram shows it. Uh, the client, in this case it's going to be Apigee, needs to first get an access token by uh, sending a request for a token uh, to the token endpoint at googleapis.com. Included in that request is a self-signed JWT. The token dispensary will verify the signature and generate back a, uh, an access token, send that back to the client, uh, and then the client can use that token uh, requesting a service, in this case um, the GCP logging. It sends that token just as a, an OAuth bearer token uh, for anything. Uh, anything it would like to do. And this is a pattern that you'll see will be repeatable with lots of different GCP services. We're just using GCP logging as, um, as this example. So uh, what do we need to make this happen? Uh, well, if we go back to the, uh, the documentation for um, the operation suite, we can see um, that there is, um, we can click through here and see some reference input. Uh, information, uh, in particular uh, about uh, how we can do uh, cloud logging. There is a REST API, uh, and that REST API is very extensive. Uh, as you can see on the left-hand side navigation bar with all the different resources you can navigate, uh, billing accounts, folders, organizations, projects. This is all related to Operation Suite. What we want in particular is entries and particularly writing entries. So we want a client that is able to write entries. And the, this is going to be possible by sending a post to that URL with this kind of a payload and the correct authentication, which as I said, is just a bearer token. So pretty simple. What do we need to make this all happen? Uh, well, we need a GCP account and a GCP project. So let's flip over to the GCP console, the Google Cloud console. That's console.cloud.google.com. Um, and what you want to do is either create or select a project. Uh, so I've selected this particular project. Uh, and I need uh, in that project um, to enable the uh, logging APIs. That's usually enabled by default for all Google Cloud projects. Uh, next thing I need is a service account. So the way I can set that up is to go to um, the left-hand nav bar, go to I am an admin and service accounts. And um, what I want to do is create a service account. So let's call it uh, log writer SA1. Uh, so that's uh, the name for the service account. Uh, we'll create that. And what I want to do is attach a role to it. For the principles of least privilege, I want that service account to have minimal capabilities. And really, I want it to be um, uh, logs uh, writer, uh, logs viewer. Let me, let me go back, uh, all roles, let me go down to logging. There's so many different roles in uh, the GCP ecosystem. Uh, I'm going to click this and I want logs writer. So I'm going to grant that role to the service account and only that role. That means it can't do anything else. Uh, all it can do is write log records and um, I'm done with that. So I've got my log writer SA. Uh, now what I need is a key. I need a service account key. And the way I'm going to do that is just by creating a key. Uh, ask Google to create a key. It's going to generate a key pair and allow me to download the private key. And I'll see that right here. I see that it's downloaded in this JSON file. 
that JSON file has the private key and a bunch of other Im information metadata that I'm going to need uh, a little bit later. Okay, so um, so I've I've got that um, set up, and now uh, let's see if we can use it. Flipping over to my text editor, I have a program here. It's implemented in Node.js. Uh, and it is designed to um, implement that sequence that I described a little bit earlier, where it uh, obtain, it's, it creates a self-signed JWT, um, then redeems that JWT for an access token, and then uses that access token to uh, write to the GCP log um, with the REST API. So, um, this is just an example. You don't need to understand uh, all the programming model um, with Node.js. You don't need to understand JavaScript. I'm only using this uh, as, a, as a useful example. So um, I'll go into my repo uh, and uh, I need to uh, install the prerequisites for this. Okay. Uh, and then what I want to do is run this program. So this is the send one log record. Uh, and let's just get some help on that. Um, so it says I can either specify a service count key file. That's that thing that I just downloaded. Um, or uh, an actual token. Now I don't have a token on a project ID. I'm just going to use that service account J JSON file. So let's do that. Node send and I'll specify key file. Uh, and that'll be in my downloads folder. Uh, my project, it names it with that. Um, and I think that is the key. I'll add uh, the verbose flag. I'll turn on verbose mode for this particular um, request. And we should be able to see this um, in action. So what, what happened, it's pretty quick. Um, what it did was it created the JWT. This is the payload in the JWT. And there are some requirements on that JWT in order to get the access token. It's gotta have the um, service account email as the uh, issuer. It's gotta have this as the audience. Uh, and it's got to have an expiry and setting the scope to the scope I want on that token. In response, I get a signed JWT, and that's this thing. Uh, what is that? Uh, or not in response, that's that's just the signed uh, JWT form of this. So nothing, nothing really exotic, but I'm sending that then to um, the token endpoint. And in response, I get uh, a time-limited access token. This is an opaque token. Um, and it is usable then to invoke the GCP logging API. So you can see the the next, so the first post is to the token endpoint, gets the token. The next post is to the logging endpoint. It uses the token and passes that payload, which just logs hello world. Uh, now flipping over, uh, let's go back to um, the Google Cloud Console. At this point, we should be able to go into the logging subsystem and view this. So we use the left-hand side navigation bar under operations. Uh, we'll go to logging, log, explorer. And I will select uh, the log name. That'll be uh, test log, I believe. And run that query. And we'll see that message, the one that I just uh, logged from the command line, it shows up here. So you can see the timestamp on that uh, matches the timestamp from my, uh, my terminal. Um, let's go back to the terminal now and we'll grab this token just to prove to you that it's just a OAuth bearer token. I'll copy that and put that into a variable. Now I should be able to uh, invoke the same endpoint via curl. So let's try that. Uh, we'll use the post. Um, the, the endpoint that I want to invoke is this. Uh, we do need to specify the content type as application JSON. And we need uh, the authorization to be a bearer and that token. So, um, and then the payload. Uh, and let's just put in this payload uh, similar to 
what we have here. Uh, and the text payload will be something a little bit different. We'll say from hello from curl, just to sort of prove to ourselves that we're invoking it from, um, from the curl command and close that off. And um, you can see I get a 200 response from that curl command. So all I've done is the second part of that sequence um, invoked the logging API with the bearer token and my own message. Um, and I get a 200 going back to the Explorer. I should be able to rerun that query, that same query, and see there's my log message. Hello from curl, uh, just logged right now. Okay, so you can see the general idea. Um, sign a JW, JWT, send it into the token endpoint, get an access token back, and then repeatedly use that access token until it's expiry for logging. Uh, and that is exactly what we're going to do from within Apigee. So in Apigee, I've got my um, API proxy set up. It's called GCP logging. It does uh, those same things, uh, and it, but it does them all from within built-in policies in, uh, in Apigee. It retrieves the uh, service account key, um, shreds the information out of that JSON to get the project ID, uh, and then checks to see if we need to get a new, um, a new access token. It checks the cache for that purpose. Uh, if we need a new access token, then Apigee will, the Apigee proxy will uh, generate a JWT, uh, use service callout to invoke the token endpoint, and then get the access token in response and cache it. Put that into the um, Apigee cache uh, for future use. Uh, and then we just invoke the endpoint. And I've got a couple of different options to do that, either using service callout or uh, the JavaScript callout. Now, how do we set this up? Uh, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through uh, setting this up. Um, there are a couple of tools here. Um, the first thing we want to do is uh, set the, um, the KVM that is required. Uh, this API proxy uses the, um, a KVM called Secrets1. Um, and I'm going to specify that here by specifying, uh, by running this program. Um, specify the organization name, the environment name, which I previously set to my settings. You're going to have to do that yourself for your own settings. And, um, and let me specify my um, credentials. So what this is doing is checking um, for the key value maps and it found the settings KVM. So it doesn't need to create it. That's all good. So we've got that. Next thing I want to do is uh, verify or load that KVM with the um, with the data from uh, JSON from the JSON uh, service account key. So how do I do that? Uh, I can use for that purpose the KVM maintenance proxy that's included in this bundle. So first I got to make sure I've imp imported and deployed that. So let's do uh, import and deploy uh, again with the organization the environment and uh, the bundle I want to deploy is uh, KVM maintenance. So this is just going to take a couple seconds. It's using this script is using the administrative API for Apigee to import and then deploy an API proxy. And you can see that that doesn't take very long. Now what I want to do is invoke that thing to load the JSON file into the KVM. Uh, now how do I do that? The way I do that is by invoking that endpoint um, with a post. Uh, and I want to pass in the path to my service account credentials. And for me, that is uh, users, Dequeza, downloads, responsive sun 93. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm using the key as SA key JSON. So that's now taken that entire, um, the contents of that file and loaded it in to this, the KVM for use at runtime. 
uh, if I want to verify that I've done that, I can uh, perform a get, uh, and we'll just say uh, KVM key equals, uh, and we should be able to see the service account key. Again, this is a secret, um, so um, be careful of disclosing that. All right. So that is the thing that's going to be used at runtime by the other API proxy, the GCP login proxy. And um, I can import that as well. Import uh, the environment. And in this case, it's the GCP logging proxy. So we're doing the same thing that we did with the KVM maintenance proxy. This is just a different proxy. Uh, the GCP logging proxy, the one that I already gave you a, a tour of. That's now imported and running. Um, and let me, uh, we should see a new revision of this. So if I go into the trace window, uh, you'll see it's revision 11 now. I can start a trace on that. And at this point, I should be able to invoke that API proxy uh, to demonstrate the logging. So let me clear my terminal and I'll invoke that. And uh, yeah, I get a pretty benign message. I, I send in a payload that says your message goes here and I get back a, a status of true. Everything looks fine. Um, flipping over to the trace session, you can see what, what's happened here. Um, the proxy receives the request. It goes and gets the service account JSON, uh, shreds that, um, checks the cache for an available token, uh, finds one and then skips all of the the token generation effort and then simply uh, uses JavaScript to invoke that um, that endpoint for logging. So at this point, I should be able to rerun, go over to cloud logging, uh, rerun the query, and you can see your message goes here. That's showed up from uh, the Apogee proxy. If I want to test something else, uh, let's try another message here. Um, that one gets sent in, flipping back over to Apogee. You can see um, that request has gone in um, and going to the, it, it had a similar flow, rerunning the query in uh, Google Cloud Logging. You can see I have that message here. So that's it. That is the um, illustration of how to use Google Cloud Logging from within an Apogee proxy. I uh, hope this has been helpful. In the notes for this video, you will see the repository that has the code for the example tools that I used, as well as the API proxy. Uh, and I hope this helps everyone. Uh, Till next time, keep it digital.